We've seen a lot of layoffs in the tech sector, something the stock market has been rewarding those shares for when we talk about layoffs. Walk us through your headcount plans. Do you see layoffs in the near future? Yeah, we're not going in that direction, Critty, and thanks for having me. We, we actually did a lot during COVID and pre-COVID to right-size our business, so we were way ahead of the curve. And while a lot of tech companies were adding quite aggressively during COVID, we were actually stable to down. So uh, we're in a great place now. We've uh, added a lot of technology capabilities and a lot of more people in engineering and product than we used to have. But in general, we are we are in a really good spot and we're uh, we're continuing to invest in the product and our capabilities for the consumer. So we don't expect to see any major downsizing. And on technology, I, I heard you, everyone's talking about AI, I talk, you, t talking about personalization on your conference call. Peter, if, um, if the story ahead is one where there could continue to be growth, where are you expecting to see that growth in 2023? I know there's been a lot of focus on what happens in Asia, particularly with China's reopening. Yeah, so it's a couple parts for us. There, there's definitely some ge geographical opportunities in Asia, but to a large extent, we've been rebuilding our whole technical platform for the last couple of years and rolling out our new marketing strategy in the U.S., which is really focused on long-term customer retention, high-value uh, consumers, and really working on retention, great products, sticky products, great loyalty programs. And that's really been working in the U.S., and we are now starting to roll that out to more places uh, and more brands as those capabilities expand and, and we get our technological transformation finished. So that's really going to drive our growth. But geographically, we expect the West to be strong, Asia to come back. Uh, and so far, you know, notwithstanding all your commentary about the economies of the world, uh, everything's been really strong in travel. Well, it feels like that's almost showed up in a way when it comes to the FX uh, pressures. In the fourth quarter, it looks like your revenue took a 400 basis point hit due to just a really strong dollar. You're speaking about the geopolitical pressures. Is that something that you see continuing in the year ahead? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, it does impact, you know, comps and, and comparing historical results to current results. But I think in general, uh, it hasn't been an issue. You know, uh, pricing has been high. We've seen inflation and travel, considerable inflation over the last several years. But those prices seem to be holding quite well, whether it's airfares or hotel rates, et cetera. And uh, the consumers seem to be more than willing to pay for it. So demand remains really strong. And uh, I don't see much change coming from that. And I don't think, it, you know, you may have some vectors impacted where uh, certain travelers might want to not might not want to come to the U.S. or uh, or whatever, but we are very strong in the U.S., and a strong dollar actually helps us on international travel. And Peter, I want to go a layer deeper on that travel demand, because obviously you have high-profile properties like Orbitz, like Hotels.com, but a lot of people are also trying to get a sense on uh, rentals, um, uh, rental sharing through uh, the likes of Verbo, which is a property of yours, and obviously people track what's happening with the likes of Airbnb as well. I know you don't break out those numbers, but what would you say about the performance of, of a property like Verbo? Yeah, so Verbo has been very strong throughout COVID and uh, continues to be, you know, far above where it was pre-COVID. Uh, what's happened, though, is that other categories have caught up. You know, home rental was very popular during COVID because of the safety issues. But uh, we've always expected, and we are seeing it, that big cities, uh, hotels, resorts, et cetera, are catching up. So the, the big lifts we saw in vacation rentals, it, it still exists. But the other areas of the business are catching up to it, and we're seeing, you know, broadly travel normalize, I would say, uh, in terms of demand and, and how it's spread between hotel, VR, and, and other categories. Well, Peter, speaking of that demand growth, it feels like there's a massive surge, specifically in January, whereas in December you were dealing with the things like Hurricane Ian, you were dealing with uh, other December travel chaos as well. Where did that January growth specifically come from? Well, again, it's pretty broad-based. Uh, uh, Asia is strong, but Asia is relatively small for us, so it's not really moving the whole number that much. Uh, but in general, demand has been strong. And as I said, we've been you know, building to this point where we've been stacking up new members, new app users, and really focused on customer retention and quality of shopping experience, service experience. So we are now at a, at a much different place after a couple years of rebuilding many of our underlying technical capabilities and really innovating more around the 
shopping experience than we think any other player in the business. So um, I think this is the culmination of a lot of work. We still have some big transformational things to do. We're launching our new big loyalty program, One Key, later this year. There's a few other things, but uh, this is really the culmination of a lot of work married to you know quite robust demand out there in the market.